uh, which is a network for aspiring and current women entrepreneurs, which has just been going for the last six months. So we're pleased to um, do this event in partnership with SG Entrepreneurs. And um, this is Gwen from SG Entrepreneurs, and she'll just explain a little bit. Um, so SG is a media research firm focused on internet technology opportunities in Asia. We work with entrepreneurs and investors to help them understand the landscape here. And thank you, Grace, for organizing everything. Grace and the team, thank you very much. Thanks, Gwen. So um, thanks for coming again, and thanks to Collective Works for holding us this evening and for the wine. Um, so we're proud to present to you um, the co-founder of Angel Hack, which is um, Greg Gottman over there. Hey, thank you. Um, so I'm going to start off, uh, I run a company called Angel Hack. It's the largest startup competition in the world. Uh, it's basically events. We're going to do one in Singapore where you go there and you can build companies. So we bring in a bunch of developers and if you're idea people, you can go there and build, uh, work with a developer and uh, you guys can build your, your big idea is, is what we're aiming for. And, uh, and then we help you get from the hackathon to getting your first check, getting to investment or getting to an incubator. So um, it's called the Angel Hack. Uh, this is our Twitter handle. And then the hashtag for tonight, I think Grace already told you, uh, these guys, so, so use these, have fun, social media oh, week. Yeah, sorry, I forgot that. Yeah, you know, we're going to be social tonight. Um, show of hands, who here uh, is a developer or technical? Okay. Okay. Who here, is, uh, who here currently has a startup? Okay. And who here is planning on starting one in the near future, year or two years? Cool. Okay, good group. Um, so, this video. We'll show you guys a little bit about our company. It's on angelhack.com if you want to watch it later. Oh. It's our boss in the back. Some more sponsors. The hackathon is really a bunch of people, a bunch of red bull, mm. huddled around a table. In a chaotic environment, creating something really, really quickly that can end up being Can you guys hear this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so our events basically start uh, mostly developers. Uh, so, open like, anybody. Uh, it's pretty standard. People show up at 9 a.m. and they start meeting people over coffee. And then yeah, around 10 30, the sponsors get to talk and showcase why they're really awesome and why they're supporting this event. Then at 12.30, the hacking begins. That's when the shit hits the fan, basically. Uh, you know, the, the teams are forming, um, people are getting really passionate, finding their little their little spaces around the, uh, you know, around this Microsoft building, and just hacking. Then they continue hacking all through the night, around 2.30 in the afternoon. It's overnight bed. The hacks have to be submitted, <laughs> and then the judging starts. So we're bringing all these top tier investors to come see what you guys built, basically. See if it's promising. It's something I wanted to host it, you know, the first place investment. because I, I'm a big believer in the startup economy and bringing entrepreneurs and developers all together to launch startups and help, you know, blow it out, blow out our economy here in Boston. Angel Hack is an awesome event. It brings together a ton of talent from the local New England market, um, folks that are eager and ambitious, of building great apps, and we definitely want to be part of that. We want to um, help people understand the opportunity around Windows 8 and around Windows Phone. Events like Angel Hack especially helps bring all of these people into one place and bring them together so you can really cultivate the talent that is already out there uh, in Boston, in the Boston area. I'm such a fan of uh, developing new solutions that I really want to volunteer and hack and meet people at the same time. We've come across some really great people, people from all different sides and facets of the engineering world to the business development, a lot of venture capitalists who've been able to pitch our idea. People have really given us some, you know, we had, we had some thoughts that we going to vet out and some ideas of where we want to go. And we're really impressed so far with what we've seen. Angel Hack and Homeward. Incredible. Valuable. Exciting. Stress. Opportunity. People will say anything Mental. if you give them a camera. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have to pay any of them, which was awesome. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, my history and how this all started and what Angel Hack means and what it can mean to you. And uh, I'm from Silicon Valley. Um, I visit startup ecosystems all around the world. Uh, we're in 25 cities now. So I've seen a lot of them. I've seen what's out there and I'm happy to share that with you guys. And, and actually, I, I do very, when I do talks, it's very informal. 
I'll basically try to figure out what you guys want to learn about and uh, do my best to take what's in my brain and give the best of the knowledge to you guys. So, um, so I'll, I'll start off, I'll talk for 10 minutes. So I moved to Silicon Valley in 2011 and uh, I moved there, I didn't know a single soul, but I knew I wanted to do a big startup. I wanted to do like the next, next big idea. And the first thing you learn, which is uh, very similar to what most of you guys will learn as you're starting your, uh, your startup dreams, is uh, you, need, you need developer talent. You need someone to code these big ideas. And uh, you don't want someone who uh, is a bad coder, right, that you're gonna build the next five, seven years of your life. That's what a startup takes, by the way. I, learned, I didn't know that in the beginning, but it takes five to seven years to, to be successful. So whatever you guys end up building is like your life project, literally. Like you are investing your life in it. It's not like you just like do it on the side. Those side projects never work out. Um, so you start going on, on this hunt to find your co-founders, right? And everyone's like, I, I need to find a co-founder. And uh, it's really, really, really hard because any good developer out there has everyone that they talk to at any given moment asking them to do a startup with them. And they're getting offers of hundred, two hundred thousand dollars uh, a year. Um, so they have these great cush jobs. They're, they're constantly being courted by companies to go after them. And then your, your startup dream means nothing to them because they have their own things they want to build too. So you have to literally shake them away from their company and what they want to do to do what you want to do. And that's if they want to work with you and not the people they went to college with, not the people they went to high school with, the actual great friends they've had, the people they've been working with, the people they have relationships with. So, so where do you find these developers and how do you build this relationship? So I went to all the different events in town. You have events like this, you have meetup groups, you have uh, you know just a, a plethora of startup events, right? And hackathons are the only place that you can go to where you actually get to spend quality time with the developer and learn what it's like to work with them. So uh, I found it a very bonding experience. Uh, so most of my best friends are developers now and, and I've met them all at hackathons. Um, and it's great, you stay with someone for 24 hours, you stay up overnight, it's like a geek slumber party. Uh, you chase each other around with Nerf guns. You you know you do helicopters. You you know you do drinking games like you name it, right? And like you guys go through that experience, that whole like ah I love you, and then like it's I'm tired and I'm you know I, d I don't want to talk to you, and I'm like being a little bit mean, but I don't want to mean. I'm just so tired. And then you're like just delirious, and you're like what are we doing? <laughs> What's going on? And, and then you go up on stage and you present in front of like these really really big people you want to impress, and they they look up to you as a uh, as a non technical person to be able to. Uh, handle these situations, which is uh, really challenging because they're challenging as is and they're scary as is. And, and you, those are, as, as a business co founder, which it seems like most of the room is, that's what you'll have to overcome. Uh, so, hackathons are happening everywhere. They might not be happening that much in Singapore uh, currently, like you might be sporadic, but in Silicon Valley, there are three or four a weekend. So, it's very obvious that this is like a growing thing. And as the ecosystems all around the world start coding more, and uh, coding becomes more. Uh, mainstream, hackathons will become more mainstream. Um, a hackathon, by the way, is a coding marathon. The, the word term was developed at MIT. Uh, it basically means you're gonna code through the night, right? You guys are just gonna hack. And, and hacking is, is not a negative thing anymore. Uh, it just basically means developer. It's taking a constraint, something that's really challenging for you, and finding a hack around it. So it's like, you can't go straight through a wall, but you can go, you know, you can go to, to a left and two right turns, and then you get to the same place. But to get a little longer, you, you've hacked your way over there. It's like sneaking into an event, which I do all the time. Um, if this was paid, I, I sneak into everything. I, I, I want to make, I'm a social hacker. Uh, at least I think I am. Um, so, so from those roots and those origins, uh, I went out and I was like, I'm going to build the largest hackathon in the world. And I think that at these events, people can build prototypes of what their startup dreams can be, and I'll get investors to judge it, and those investors will tell us what the good ones are, because you know, no one knows if their idea is really great. You think your idea is great, but I've seen people work on their ideas for a lifetime, and then nothing happens, right? So. It's great to you, but what's it mean to investors? And who can I get advice from? Who do I respect? So you present these big ideas to them, and they tell you. And from that, we're going to build startups. We're going to make little startup babies. Uh, and then I thought I could do it all virtual. So we started doing, I wanted to do it all over the world. And I was like, well, if you actually do the physical events, it'd be really, really hard to scale. Because everything's about scale, right? You want to be global. You want to be the big thing. You don't want to be like a little localized anything, nothing small. So. Uh, you can't do it virtual, it turned out, so we had to learn how to do it local, which is really challenging. We've been doing it for a year and a half now. We're now in 25 cities. We average 225 attendees at every city, so they're large events. We normally bring the entire startup ecosystem together. So we'll bring social media in, we'll bring developer ecosystems in, we'll bring universities in, we'll bring co-work spaces in, we'll bring meetup groups in, we'll bring any influencers that have impact on the, the entrepreneurs of that community, and we'll bring everyone together. We'll say, you know, we're Switzerland. We're going to throw the biggest event in town. We want everyone to be there. We're all going to have fun. We're going to geek out. And we make these cool shirts. We make these geek shirts. Everyone, everyone wears hack shirts. You go around like all, any of the other cities we're in, people wear this. This is like a sign of pride. 
Uh, in in the, an older day, this is like you know it's it's, um, it's counterculture, uh, but geek chic is the new thing, and we're we're happy to bring that to the world. Uh, hack strong. Uh, and then what we realized was after these events, you can't really build a startup in one day. You can't build anything that that works. You can't build payment systems. You can't build like a, a true startup. So it, it turns out it takes a long time. And I didn't know this. I was very new when I came there. So we had to <laughs> we had to literally build. An entire, we start with a two week program, then a two month program. Now it's a four month program to help the startups the best ideas from when they get out of the hackathon to launching a startup, which is what you really need. That's, that's the support system you need. So we've now had companies that are familiar with the startup ecosystem. We've had companies get into Y Combinator, 500 startups, uh, Techstars. Uh, we're about to have a team get into AngelPad. Uh, we've had teams go into AngelList and raise a million dollars. So we've been very, very successful at identifying talent and nurturing them through for that first, first step. And we're excited that we're going to build our like we. It's been an informal incubator for the past, uh, I guess, I guess forever, um, and we've never taken any equity. And now what we're going to do is it's, it's going to be a proper accelerator program where we mentor you here with local entrepreneurs, and uh, it's a four month program where you mentor with local entrepreneurs. And then we also do every Tuesdays we do a Google Hangout with everyone all over the world with a Silicon Valley mentor, uh, partnerships with Facebook and other big companies that you'll be using helping you get your first 100 customers, first 1,000 customers, helping you with legal issues and founder issues and equity issues, uh, helping you with scaling issues when you finally get there and your hosting services and optimizations and um, all these really challenging, weird, dumb shit that has nothing to do with the actual product, but you have to deal with and it makes most startups fall apart. And then you have to deal with whether or not you even have a good product, which is also challenging, so idea validation. So we get you past all this, then we fly all the winners in these 25 cities to Silicon Valley and we introduce them to all the biggest people in the industry. We take them, we get them boost at TechCrunch Disrupt, which is the biggest festival in the industry, and uh, we kind of hack the system to making a startup, and we did it around the globe. So, so that's Angel Hack. Uh, I hope that you guys will attend our event, which is going to happen in on June first. So we're uh, semi partnered with Echelon. It's June fourth. So we'll be bringing in some big people from Silicon Valley to come here and judge the event, and then everyone will go to Echelon. So that's. One of our partners here. We're also uh, looking to partner with Gwen from yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, from uh, SG Entrepreneurs. If you guys know that, uh, it's delicious wine, by the way. We someone should just buy the bar, by the way. We should all be drinking wine right now. I don't know what this whole like us all not drinking right now thing is. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we can never stand for this. Oh, so <laughs> yes. Uh, what is the age limit to participate? There's no age limit. Also for high school. Students? Yes, no. we've had high school students win it. So we've had 16-year-olds win it, and then we get them jobs at Google and Facebook. Um, I think they work for the government now because they spend a month in North Korea. I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently they're under the radar. Um, but yeah, high school students are brilliant these days, much smarter than us. Um, we, we have like a 10-year sh shelf life before this new age of like tech smarties comes around and just makes us all retarded. <laughs> but uh, it'll be good. Could be a good run for us. I'm very excited for the next 10. Um, yeah, so we, we, we want to bring the entire ecosystem together, even even the ones starting out. Uh, and there's no age limit if you're old either. We have, uh, you know, we've had people 50 and 60 come to our events. And, um, they normally don't win uh, because the event's an overnight event, and you have to actually code at the event. Uh, everyone starts at the same time. The winners normally go through the night, and it's normally a, a 20 to 30 year old range uh, of the people that have that endurance system. But that's also what you look for in a startup. You want someone who can. Uh, when you have to push a product out there that can, you know, make it through that that sprint and push out great product, and um, and then still like go and pitch it because you got to always be pitching clients. Uh, the things that happen at our events at hackathons are very similar to to just what you need to do in a startup. So um, we think that we've we figured out the answer. Uh, we'll have probably three years if we continue to be successful before like there's a bunch of copycats and um, no one even knows. Like, the, the whole system's changed. Everything changes right so fast in this industry. So we'll have to keep up, but. It's another story for another day. Um, so any questions on that stuff so far? No? Okay, so any, so I'm going to take questions. Uh, I normally have a whiteboard. I love using whiteboards. Um, any questions on hackathons? Any questions on community events? These are all things that I'm pretty good at. Um, you talked about a lot about coding. Yeah. You know, and product <laughs> and investors. But what about the business side? Because yes. you have a product, you have a lot of color, but the investor wants to know what's going to be your sales pipeline, how you're going to get traction, mm -hmm. what's your marketing strategy. 
So how do you include all those components and people bringing this knowledge with the coder? How does it work? So just understand. The knowledge with the coder. So you want to no, know? I mean, so all the coder they bring all the business aspect and all the business model mm -hmm. with the product. Or how does it work? At the hackathon or post hackathon? Uh, when it's presented to the investor. Ah, uh, so when you present it to the investor, you are, I mean, you're, you're demoing your product. So you, you've built something and you're showing him how it works. And uh, we don't want to see too much of, uh, we don't want to see vaporware, we don't want to see uh, PowerPoints, you know, all these PowerPoints. People don't have these PowerPoints and they don't even build anything. We want to see builders. Um, the last thing you want to do is invest in a startup that has no tech in it. Um, and I don't mean tech like in a, you know, I'm going to have a million users, it's going to scale because it's optimized perfectly. I mean tech like you have to have a developer on your team and he has to know how to code and make things work. So, so that's what we want to see. We want to see the demo of the product. And I'd say most products are, are things that have already been built before. When you have something new and no one's seen it before, that's kind of what awes the crowd. That's, that's really what, uh, what shines. Uh, the, the people, the, the fogies. Uh, so we, we've been very successful at getting uh, very developer rich ecosystems involved. So we normally have 75% developers. Um, which, if you are not intimidated by that as a fogeek, it's the perfect situation to find someone. And uh, as, a, as a woman entrepreneur, I see a lot of women in the, in the room. Um, man, geeks love working with women. So <laughs> you guys have a huge advantage. Uh, as and not, not just women, but men too, you have to find a way to add value to a developer. You have to be like, how can I, what you've got to keep in your, in your mind is how can I help them, right? What can I, like, if you can walk up to a developer and basically, you know, be like, I, I do this, uh, you know, what can I do to help you? What, what are you working on? How can I, I you want to tell them about your network, uh, you want to connect them to people, you want to, uh, you want to listen to their ideas and think of like creative ways where they, you might be able to help that. Um, you got to start the conversation with how can I help you and, and not like I have this idea and don't you want to build it with me? Because they get that all day and it just makes you like one of a thousand. What's the difference between two hackathons? Because there's a ton of them right now. There's yes. the Startup Weekend, the Up Hackathon. I mean, there's many yes. brands. Some are local, some are global. So is there a way that you differentiate with the other? So, uh, two big ways where we differentiate. One, we have developers at our events. So they, most, they seem to have two. You would think so. But, uh, so competitors typically have like 25% developers and it's a bunch of business uh, nomads, what's called no, 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 no devs? Uh -huh. Faux fo, fo devs, fo, fo geeks. So a bunch of faux geeks uh, running around being like, I need to find a developer. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then they end up just like working with each other, making a PowerPoint and doing some <laughs> research on a topic and uh, presenting it, and they're very, very proud, and um, it's great. You know, we love entrepreneurship, but that company will never be a company. And you know, they're they're kind of like wasting their time. You need tech in a startup. As a business guy, you have very, very little value. You have to understand that deep down, and you do not want more than one business guy on a founding team. So if you're already working with one business guy, like you're you're already doing for failure. That means if you happen to find another tech guy, then you're a three-man team, two business guys, one one developer. Um, it's gonna be very, very challenging for you guys. So, so we differ in that way that we bring a lot of developers to the table. So we'll do extensive marketing in every community that we go to. Uh, in Singapore, we're going to do a ton of university outreach. And we're going to look, look to Jakarta. We're going to look to uh, Kuala Lumpur. And we're going to say, come in and come to the event because that's where the developers are. And our event here is going to suck if we have no developers. So we do a lot of work that other people don't do to bring in developers. Um, the second thing that we do is we, we have our incubator program. So we ensure that after the event, the best teams are successful. So if you win an angel hack, you're automatically in the incubator. Uh, 25 cities will have 40 people in the, in the incubator program. Uh, top 25 automatically get in, so first place in every city, and then we accept applications and we take in 15 more, hand-selected. Um, and then when we hand-select them, uh, we're, we're really looking at your background. So we're going on your LinkedIn profiles and stuff, and we're saying, like, how good are you? Who, who's validated you before? Um, those are the type of things that investors look at. So we just look at those of us. Investors don't invest in non-technical teams. So, sounds like you are taking equity stake now because you said you weren't. Right. So it, it's going to be really creative. So we want to stay super founder friendly. Uh, if you have a program, um, 
that takes more than it gives, you're, uh, you're stealing, right? And you're stealing from startups, and startups don't have much to give as is. So we will take a 3% equity stake if we're successful at raising them $50,000 or getting them into a Y Combinator, 500 startups, uh, Techstars, uh, Startup Chili, um, AngelPad, so some of the best, right? So there's like a top 10, 20 incubators. And then we also want to have local incubator partners in all these cities. So if we're successful at making that handoff in the right way, we'll take 3%. If we're not, we won't take anything. Fair deal? So when are you planning your event here? That's June 1st. Um, so the event's June 1st. Uh, June 1st and 2nd is a Saturday, Sunday. Uh, it'll be $50 to buy a ticket, but we're going to give out like 50% off codes, I think, to everyone here through Grace. Or Gwen, whoever wants to. Yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah. And uh, so if you guys want to come, we'd love to have you. Um, is anyone interested at all in Silicon Valley and what happens there? And, uh, yeah. Yeah? Okay, so. That's why you're ready Yeah? Okay. I hope so too. Um, I'm happy to make you fall asleep yet. It's great. Uh, so, Silicon Valley is awesome. There's events like this, like, and this is a pretty good one, right? So we have like 50 people here. So there's an event with, let's say, 50 or more four times a day. And it's just such a, every, everything's niche, right? So you have an event for just like drinking and being an entrepreneur. You have an event for being a Ruby developer. You have an event for being an HTML developer, for being a JavaScript developer, for being a, uh, a founder, but like not having like, like co-founder dating things. You have, um, like you name it. Anything that you've ever wanted to go to just has these huge tech groups there. and. It's really, really easy to network and, and get plugged in just by going around and meeting the community. So uh, I moved there, I didn't know a single soul. Now I'm one of the most connected people there. And I wasn't scared to go to events. I wasn't scared to meet new people. And, and everyone there, once you, once you go out there and you put yourself out there, everyone's looking to meet you too. Because everyone who goes to these events, it's all about networking. It's all about like, what are you doing? How can we work together? Uh, do you know a developer I can find? You know, that, that's, I can't tell you how often that comes up. The, the most common thing that everyone's going to these events for. Um, but they're, they're really interesting people and everyone's collaborative, right? So uh, we work with Google, we work with Facebook, we work with Palantir, we work with Pearson, we work with uh, Heroku, we work with uh, Bloomberg, we work with Amazon, we work with, um, you know, you name it, everyone. And, and setting up these deals is really, really easy being in the Valley because it's like the, the guy who sets up the deals there and you're going to an event and you go and you meet him and he's totally open. You know, and he's like, what are you doing? And he's, as long as your goals align with his goals, he's like, yeah, we'll help you out. We'll do something for you. And then you have this like monster like logo on, on whatever it is you're doing, like your startup. You know, it's like, you know, Microsoft's a customer. Like that shit looks good, you know? Uh, and then you meet someone at a party or you're just out drinking and he like, works for TechCrunch. And he's like, cool, cool, you know? And, and everyone, par everyone parties. Like the whole notion that like, uh, so Singapore's a little conservative as, as, a, as a city, <laughs> right? Just a little bit. Um, I was chewing gum when I came in here. I was a little worried. Uh, my sucker was chewing gum yesterday, which made me feel better. Um, she taught me this. Impressed her. Uh, but it's it's very liberal, you know. Um, we have uh, we it's legal to smoke marijuana. Uh, people literally, you know, go out every night and they get drunk in the industry and they, they look to network and talk to people and do business. Um, and it's just a very really fun and open open city. And it's really, really easy. It's, uh, it's not scary. Um, it's, it's scary when you're not there. It seems like a black box. When you get there, it's like, it's no big deal. Like, everyone, like, just like tonight, but consider free beer and everyone's drinking and you're staying here for like an hour and a half afterwards and everyone's just like hanging out, meeting everyone, passing all these business cards, like, every night. Literally, and uh, what's really weird is there's there's such a big technology scene that the people in it they, they don't really it's it's a little incestuous, right? Like you're you're going from event to event to event. There's so many events in tech, you don't have to leave the tech ecosystem. So you don't necessarily go out and meet people outside of tech, like you do. But like they're completely uninteresting. Like they're like normal people that have this job for like Citigroup or something like that, you know? And like, <laughs> you know, some bank, some banker, and his, his life is at a desk and sucks and he's like, you know, you're like, all my friends, they like build things and they start good companies and they, they hustle investors and they have like these huge clients and um, and that, that's just, the, the whole industry is set up to help you there. And even if you just visit from Singapore, it's really, really easy to get connected there. Um, so we met, the way that we came to Singapore, uh, there was a company called Gush Cloud <laughs> and Gush Cloud is a Singapore company but they also have some of the team went to San Francisco and we met Gush Cloud there and they were like, come to Singapore. We are like, we'd love to be in Singapore. Sounds great. 
It's like a beautiful city, everyone always talks about it. And, uh, and that's how we're here, right? It was just a, an open conversation. The founder reached out, we're like, that sounds awesome. Because um, everyone's just very collaborative like that. Uh, and so that's a, a great idea of a startup, a Singapore startup that came, and, and you guys can follow that model. Uh, it's, really just, it's, it's just set up to help you, right? The whole city is there to help you in everything you're doing, as long as you have a developer. I'll keep ranting. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I guess the, the whole hackathon thing is, is like a source of making process, right? Before the meat goes into that, that sheath, uh, can you, like, how, how messy is it at the beginning? How do people actually ah. get together and, and focus? So, so we do some, some networking beforehand. This blue light is really, really bright. Like, is there any uh, at this point? Let's just do this. Do this. I love walking uh, around, but I keep getting yeah. my eyes burnt out. Um, hey. Oh, is that yours? So there's about an hour and a half of networking before the event. Um, we do allow you to go up there and pitch your ideas, similar to uh, other events you've been to, and to recruit new team members. We also have a website called Hackathon.io which is where you can, before the event, go in there and start talking to people. It's, it's for all hackathons, it's a platform we built. Um, it's awesome, you should check it out. Um, I will tell you, it's very, very rare for people to meet each other at the event and, and to win. The best teams, uh, they've gone to a meetup or an event like this beforehand, they've, they've come up and like made an announcement for someone that they want to work with, and. Um, and that's their idea, and they've, they've, they've started collaborating with them, right? They've gone out for drinks. They have some kind of understanding of how, how they're going to work together. Uh, they have an understanding of the, the hosting software and the, the servers they're going to set up. And, um, it's, not, it's not all like a, a challenge. And a lot of people meet each other, and it's really fun at the event to do it that way. It's just that uh, you're not going to win. It's just uh, it's still a great event, and you're still going to have a great time. But um, the best people, they come in there, they know what they're going to build, they know how they're going to build it, and uh, they, they just code away all night. Just like heads down, which is crazy. So they try to jam as much features in this thing as possible. For no, so you don't want to have all the features. It's not about that. So the key to winning a hackathon um, is, is not features. It's it's the right product that like it's, it's something different people haven't thought of before, and then it's making it like beautiful and functional as best you can. So like I would say anything more than two features probably too far. Um, so beautiful function is like UI, UX centric, yeah. very important? Yeah, well, I mean, you can use Bootstrap, right? You can use uh, these things that people who don't know uh, really great uh, design can use that are out there for you. Um, but you, you want to seem somewhat designed. You know, you don't want it to just be like a blank white page with like a button here and a button there. Like that's, you know, that never steals anyone's heart. Uh, I got it. Are there ever like any creative projects that you can that comes out of it, like for example, things like Arduino or electronics, or other, other than sure. hardware space. hacks, hardware hacks, hardware. Oh, uh, yeah, correct. Okay. So, we had a guy build, um, they started, it's called Surf Score, some surfers, and they wanted a way to measure how quantified itself is the market. They wanted to know how well they were surfing, how big the waves were, and how fast they were doing. So, he literally uh, put his iPhone in a bag, plastic bag, taped it to his surfboard. Um, and then they built a like a program for measuring the accelerometer and stuff, and, and knowing what those waves would be like, uh, which was a great hack, you know. Like, like we were like, wow, no one's ever done that before. And GoPro is a billion dollar company, right? So, um, hardware is really sexy right now, and the judges loved it. By the time that we got him from the hackathon to the final event, they turned into this little sticker, like little device, that you put onto the surfboard, and it sticks there, like boom. And you can do surf. Then they, they they thought about it. they're like surfboards. Skateboards, snowboards, all boards, and then they, you know, and then they develop this beautiful interface of of understanding like how fast you're going, uh, where you're going, what you did, and like now they're trying to gamify it and give it badges and stuff like that. Um, it was pretty pretty cool. We worked them into Google. Uh, we had them meet with the guys who built Google Glass. Uh, we thought it was a pretty promising startup, so we put a lot of work into it. Um, still be probably two years before you ever hear about it, or it's even hits market, right? Because then the manufacturing side of it's crazy. Uh, hardware startups are very, very tough. Um, and investors don't like investing in them. But they're super sexy, and they can be very successful. So, so yes, you can win if you build one, 
Uh, it's a challenging road, though. You should know that. I like all the nods you give. I feel like you have a really good idea in there somewhere. Like you, you, already, you already know what you want to build. Yeah. Does anyone have some, some idea, a crazy idea they want to pitch? Have fun with this. Maybe you can find someone in the room to work with. Yeah, an impromptu, impromptu little pitch thing. <laughs> One minute elevator pitch. I'll go first. I'm, I'm, <laughs> drinking. I'm drinking, so it's it's easy for me. Um, Twelve dollars a drink. Um, no, you said this. Uh, yeah, I will. I will just the market. No, you know what I've always wanted to build. Um, so whenever I travel to these, these different cities, uh, you never know what apps. Are out there. You don't know, like I don't know, like the app for Singapore. I don't know how uh, public transit's used. I don't know how. If you guys have like a Yelp or a review site, um, go on Yelp is also here in Singapore. I don't know. I mean, a lot of I, I travel all over the world, right? So a lot of places they're not. Um, I remember being in Santiago, Chile. Like Google Maps and shit, public transport isn't hooked up to it. I was you're just lost. Like they have, they have an app they use, right? But I have no idea what it is. Um, so I want to build a localized app network. It allows you to find the top apps in that market, uh, wherever you are, and uh, and recommends them to you. And I want to monetize it through uh, through distribution of apps and having app builders pay me money. Um, there's a lot more to it. I've done some research on it. It's not like the easiest thing in the world. It's really hard to hack Apple's system and make um, products that work in one country work in another country and, and give people access to download them. There's like a lot of hairy networks to it. And then getting people to find out about your thing and distribute the app that I make would be really hard. But that's what I want. That's my big idea. Um, I have a couple, but. I'll let you guys go now. I think they need wine. Wine? Yeah. <laughs> Anyone? Come on, one, one minute. No one has an idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so then I have an idea. Is it, should we? Is, Cam it, has it, to break the news to you. Oh. oh but, yeah. No, 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 we're not down, and I have all the questions. Oh, okay. Oh. You have other questions? Yeah. Oh, she's got questions. No, he was ready to. You know, you know. No, yeah. no, no, I have other questions, but I just want to let him finish with anyone want to pitch. Okay, so I have my question. So, um, obviously, I'm kind of fascinated with the Silicon Valley, and I watched a couple of episodes of the TV show <laughs> Silicon Valley. Ooh. And it was pretty bad. So, like, how far bad. from the truth it is? Uh, so, that show, that's interesting. Is, is anyone familiar with the Silicon Valley Bravo Network show? Yeah. No. Okay, yeah. because no one watches it in Silicon Valley either. Um, <laughs> those, those are social media people, um, and when I when I say that, I, I basically mean they're they're completely detached from the the developer because there, there's not one technical person on there, and startups are based around technical people. There's this one guy who pretends he's a geek and like Dwight. <laughs> Hammer Dwight. <laughs> so Dwight's a good drinking buddy. Um, he called me right before I came here. Uh, that guy's like a lush, you know. It's, it, it, it basically took the most outlandish people in the community that uh, the real people don't really spend time with okay. um, because it's they're like you don't want to be associated. And they made a TV show about them. And now people think that's how Silicon Valley is. It's, so every, everyone in, inside of Silicon Valley is like very disrupted by the show. And uh, <laughs> everyone on the show is semi-ostracized. Um, I don't know public that is or if we get in trouble for saying that, but uh, that's, that's how it works. Um, they're like blacklisted. Really? But Dwight's really fun. Dwight's actually uh, the most fun person on that show. And he's, he's actually a good guy. He works at Facebook now. Uh, he runs their events. Uh, yeah, that's not a depiction of how things go. So what happened? Like nobody wanted 